time for our series, The Year That Changed My Life. It's when we take a moment to reflect on our experiences and revisit those turning points that define who we are. And when I was, we were asked about this, I said, well, you know, 2007, I was diagnosed with cancer. 2004, my father died. That really changed my life. 1990, I went to ESPN. That changed my life. And I thought, well, what was the year that helped me be able to handle the good and the bad that would come down the road? And lots of folks, I went to my senior year of high school. It was both a departure and new beginning. So let's go back now. 1979. Nineteen seventy nine. Disco anthems like Sheik's La Freak reign supreme on the Billboard charts. On the big screen, Bo Derek gave new meaning to Perfect Ten, while Kramer vs. Kramer redefined family drama. Sony introduced The Walkman. Dallas, The Jeffersons, and Three's Company, just a few of the shows that captured the attention of TV audiences all across the country. But for me, the center of the universe was past Christiane High School. 1979 was the year for me. It was my senior year in high school, and you always think you're all that in a bag of chips. She was a basketball player. She was a tennis player. Uh, she had a lot of things going on in her life. And so it was assembly, past Christiane High, 1979. Picture it, okay? Mr. Soignier, our principal, comes out for the awards and tells us the different awards for the year. Mr. Soignier then says, Salutatorian, class of 1979, Robin Roberts. And there was a splattering of applause, like, Robin? No! And I slowly got out of my chair and I went up to the stage and he's, Mr. Soignier says, you're salutatorian. Was I the smartest? No, but I was the second smartest. But it wasn't even that. It was, I actually always tried my best. It changed my whole outlook and on what I could do and what I could achieve. And that I didn't just, wasn't going just to rely. Because at that point, I'd always say, oh, I'm going to be a professional athlete. She was much more confident, much more um, ready to conquer the world. And I had the heart and the desire. But this is a muscle that we all can use and we're all blessed with. I could have won every national championship and state title, none of it meant as much as, as being named salutatorian. That just felt good. That just felt good. Now we all know high school is a time we make our own decisions. Some decisions are small. Uh, yeah, that's me in the plaid suit. Hey, come on, it was the 70s. And some decisions are big, like where to go to college. I had an opportunity to play college ball for one of the best known programs in the country. I had decided that I was going to attend LSU, something that I had always said. And uh, shortly after graduation, Coach Logue drove me to Baton Rouge to check out the campus and play a little basketball with the team. And I got to campus in Baton Rouge. It's a beautiful campus, don't get me wrong. It's just really, I don't mean, just renowned. And I just didn't, it didn't feel right. Just didn't didn't feel like me. Didn't feel right. It's a huge campus, and it was pretty overwhelming for her. So we got back in the car and we're heading back home to Mississippi, and we're on the interstate. And then there's a sign that says Southeastern Louisiana University next right. And I said, Coach Lowe, can we just can we kind of check this out? And we just decided to go and visit. I wanted Robin to think for herself about what she wanted. People all around were saying, you need to do this, you need to do that, or why don't you do this? And I thought that for Robin, she needed to just find within herself what she needed to do. I'm not going to say that the heavens parted and the birds started singing, and it was, but I knew that it was the right place for me. Anything is possible. If this is what I want to do, I can do it. I should do it. Robin had um, had just grown up before my eyes, basically. After high school graduation, I headed to Southeastern Louisiana University. I played basketball, met amazing teachers and friends, and continued my journey of self-discovery. The lesson for me, I learned how to trust myself. And that has served me very well. We always have that inner voice. We always hear that. We don't always listen. And when you get quiet and you hear that, it just, it serves you well in so many ways. 
Ah, 1979. Good times. Good times. I was blessed to have some of the most uh, amazing teammates, friends, and teachers, and I really learned to trust myself. And I had a great safety net, wonderful parents mm -hmm. at home. But were you shy? Is, is that what we're hearing in there, I too? Was, I was not confident. I thought everything existed because I was a good athlete. Ah. And so that was every that was my entire focus, and so it was it was the first time that I realized that I had been applying myself in other areas. And education, as you know, is so important to mm -hmm. to our family. So it just gave me that aha moment, and it also it was a big deal to. I said I was going to a, a prominent university, and I changed my mind because I followed my heart. Mm -hmm. And I love Southeast Louisiana University. I'm so glad I made that decision. And LSU is fabulous and all that. But it was just uh, taking that moment to, as I said, actually listen. You hear those little voices, but listen. I think we're going to find the valedictorian and find out where Tracy they are. Moran. I Tracy Moran. Tracy Moran. Where Tracy are you Moran. now? I mean, she had it locked up from birth. We knew Tracy. <laughs> there was no surprise. But when they said, my name is Mr. Swan, they're like, what the way you? And I was, I was hesitant. I was like, I thought, oh, this is a joke. It was before being, you know, punked or whatever. I'm like, I, I'm not getting up there. But you just never know how life is going to surprise you. That's you never it. know. That's it. The good yeah. things happen sometimes when you're not watching That's them. That's the best happen. part.